Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Venn diagrams and the general addition rule as they apply to, as they apply to um, probability. So let's go. This first box is going to be divided in half. And as we look at Venn diagrams and probability and the general addition rule, how they all fit together, I think it's important to understand that two-way tables and Venn diagrams are, they, they go together. And so if I draw a two-way table over here and we consider the events that could possibly happen with the two-way table, let's look at the, the probability of two different events happening. So uh, I've got A and I've got B here. And while we're considering this two-way table, we don't necessarily know what's going in there, right? We don't know if it's, you know, someone who drives a red car or blue car or whatever it happens to be. But at the very least on these, on this horizontal, uh, up above, it's going to be B or B complement. So B either B happens or B does not happen. And on the vertical here, it's going to be A or A complement. So either A happens or it doesn't. I'm not actually really concerned about the probabilities themselves, but what I'm going to be looking at is what exactly uh, are the, the numbers or the quantities that are going in here. And so I'm going to label these in four different uh, colors because these are going to correspond to our Venn diagram over here. And it's going to translate in this kind of way. So let's consider that this is A and this is B. Those colors translate in this way. In the top right corner here is what is shared. So both A and B. Notice it falls into this category of it's B, but it's also A, so that's one, so that, that's what goes in the middle. And we always want to start in that middle because our A circle is going to be everybody who said in response to a survey or whatever it happens to be, A. And so if we start with this middle, it's going to give us an idea of A, and then this part is A, but not B. And so that's going to be our two portion here because this is what's in A, but not in B. So it's this moon, this moon shaped here. So you can imagine on this other side over here is going to be what's in B, but not in A. And so that's three. And if we look down here, this is what's in B, but not in A. So B, but not A. And I'm going to erase those because I don't want to write all over my diagram there. And so what is left is what's not in B and not in A. And so that's that space outside of our two circles or the space inside of our, and, and the space that's inside of our rectangle here, which is known as our sample space. So the general addition rule goes like this. Uh, the probability of A or B happening, remember, this P means the probability of, what's in the parentheses is what you're finding the probability of happening, and it's equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B, which makes sense, right? So probability of A happening or B happening would be the probability of A happening plus probability of B happening. But when we consider the general addition rule, what we have to consider is it's the probability of A uh, plus the probability of B, and what you notice is Actually, there's a space here that's counted twice. And so in our general addition rule, we have to subtract the probability of A uh, intersect B. So that middle portion, is a, as I like to call it. And so when we write out the actual definition of the general addition rule, it is if events A and B are mutually exclusive, So if they're mutually exclusive, meaning they, they don't they don't occur together. Occur together. For example, what's the probability um, of a vehicle being a motorcycle and a car? Well, those are mutually exclusive. It can't be a motorcycle and uh, a car. And so then the probability of A or B is really equal to, uh, sorry, um, let me let me go back a little bit here. If they're mutually exclusive, the probability of A and B together is equal to zero. There is no probability of them happening together. So you can't be a motorcycle and a car if you're a vehicle. And so the general addition rule for a mutually exclusive event uh, would be the probability of A or B 
is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. And that makes sense. So essentially, you are still subtracting the probability of A and B, but it's zero because they're mutually exclusive. So there's no shared space between them. Let's look at this example down below to kind of help us make that connection between two-way tables and Venn diagrams. A good way to do these check your understandings would be to pause it here, try these A, B, C, and D on your own, and then come back and see in my explanation like where you fell short or, or what you got right. So I would recommend pausing here. If not, then I'm just going to keep rolling and we're going to go through it together. When I come across a two-way table, I like to take my, my, uh, my sums across across the rows and across the columns. And so 58 plus 24 is 82. 12 plus 22 would be 34. And down the way here would be 70. So 58 plus 12. And then 24 plus 22 would be 46. And so obviously um, we wanna make sure that everything adds up together, right? So the 70 plus the 46 would be 116. And then 82 plus 34 would also give us uh, 116. So our total there is 116 and that's a good kind of way to make sure when we if, if we have to start making those proportions right uh, we can have the correct numbers and the totals already explain in plain language that p uh, of o, o superscript c means and find the probability well let's go back to the prompt i forgot to read the prompt uh, a random sample of high school students were surveyed regarding their toilet paper habits should the toilet paper be uh, pull over the roll. Do they replace the roll when it's empty? So do they replace the roll when it's empty? Do they pull the toilet paper over the roll? So uh, the two-way table displays the data. Suppose we choose a member of the sample at random to find the events O as over and R is equal to replace. So if event O is they pull it over the top of the roll and event R is that they replace the roll when it's out, uh, then we're going to talk about what P O of C means uh, that's the probability of the complement of o so what's not o so not over so so p o superscript c is the probability that you choose a student Uh, who does not pull the roll over the top. Okay, so they do not pull the roll uh, over the top. So they, they don't, don't pull it, pull the toilet paper over the roll. Sorry. Let's be specific. So they don't pull the toilet paper over. Uh, and so in this case, we want to find that probability. And so P of O superscript C is the people who don't pull the toilet paper over the roll. So who is that? So do you pull it over the roll? No. Uh, so 46 out of 116 uh, people, which is equal to 0 0.397. So notice I expressed it as a fraction without reducing the denominator and also as a decimal there. So explain why P O or R is not equal to P of O plus P of R, then P find P of O, uh, P the probability of O or R. So why isn't it zero? Um, these events aren't mutually exclusive. So think about it like this. One does not disqualify the other. So if you're a person who pulls the toilet paper over the roll, does that, does that have any bearing on whether you put, you know, replace toilet paper when, when it's done? Well, maybe you don't know. Maybe you're like, I don't know. But what does that even mean? Well, to consider mutually exclusive events, think about they can't happen at the same time. So what would be the, the mutually exclusive event to pulling something over the roll? Meaning the thing that can't happen at the same time. So you can't pull it both over the roll and under the roll. The mutually exclusive event of replacing it when it's empty would be not replacing it when it's empty because it's the opposite. And so it can't be opposite things at the same time. So um, what we'd say is the events, quote, over the roll and replace when empty uh, are not mutually exclusive. 
Okay, they're not mutually exclusive. So uh, the probability of O or R is equal to 70 uh, over 116 because that would be, yes, we pull the toilet paper over the roll plus people who replace when empty. So 82 over 116. And just as a, a side note, what if you just, what if you forgot and you just added these two things, right? So you were like, oh, I don't, I don't, I'm not even considering mutually exclusive. Well, what happens in this particular case doesn't always happen. What happens in this particular case is we'd end up with uh, 152 over uh, 116, right? Uh, and that's, that's tricky, right? Because that is more than 100%. And so that's not actually correct. So we'd have to subtract what is shared, which is the 58 over 116. And that, you know, that comes from, um, that, that, you know, that comes from what is the crossover of both here. Remember what goes in the middle uh, of that Venn diagram is that upper left-hand corner. And so what is both is 58 here. And so that would leave me with uh, 94 over 116 which is equal to 0.81, just about there. So 81% of people uh, are O or R. So they pull over the roll or they replace it when it's done. So when we make this Venn diagram to display these results, um, remember, we have a two-way table here. So we have our two circles. Let this one be O. Let's let this one be R. In the middle goes what is shared. So how many people are shared? So I'm going to put uh, 58 in the middle here. And then how do I discern the rest of this? So uh, to talk about, they go over the roll, there's 70 total, okay? And so uh, the 12 goes here, and, and remember, three goes there. And so, you know, I'm gonna put my 12 here, and then this is 24, and then out here goes my 22. And now obviously it depends on where you put your, where you put your, um, your letters, right? So up here I said, oh, well, it's A complement three goes on the right. Well, it's really, where did you put your, where did you put your events? And so uh, if you put O on, over on the left, so if you put over on the left, then it would be, you know, you know, it would be uh, that, that way reversed in this particular case. But, that, but be that as it may, you start in the middle and that's what is shared between the two of them. And then um, replaces a roll when empty is on this side. So we have, you know, our, our, our thing is reversed here. So um, what can we do with this? Well, now we can do all kinds of, we can do all kinds of probability calculations and they can ask you a bunch of questions like what about this and this happening at the same time and those sorts of things. And so what, write the event does not replace the role and prefers the toilet paper pulls over the role in symbolic form. So let's start from the very beginning. It's the probability of not replace. So if R is equal to replace, then not replace would be R superscript C. Uh, and pulls over the roll, so O is over the roll, so we would say and, oh, okay. So what? who is that person that does not replace it? So let me erase a couple things here. That person that does not erase it, so we're in this row here, and also pulls it over the roll. So where's my overlap? It's at that 12. And so in this case, it would be 12 over 116, writing it as a fraction in unreduced form equal to 0 0.103. So just over 10% of people um, do not replace, but also pull over the roll. Okay, so guys, that's the basics between the connection between two-way tables and uh, between two-way tables and Venn diagrams. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. And